Look at the world through Rick Guadotti's eyes and you'll see beauty all around you. As a former fashion photographer, Rick worked with some of the world's top models. But as he explains, his life forever changed in 1997 when he spotted a young girl on a Manhattan street. Spotted this gorgeous kid waiting for a bus in New York City just here at the corner of Park and 20th. Stunning, white, white hair, pale skin, but never included in the, in the beauty standard. I, I, this kid had a genetic condition called albinism. Albino was the common term that I knew. She was stunning, yet never, ever have I met a model that looked like this kid. And that was the beginning of Rick's journey. He founded Positive Exposure, a not-for-profit that works with, supports, and celebrates people living with differences, genetic, physical, behavioral, and intellectual. After we started Positive Exposure, ready to go, the first kid that walks into the studio to be photographed is Christine, and she's She's long white hair. She's like 5'10". She's stunning. But she walks in with her shoulders hunched, head down, no eye contact, one word answers. This kid was abused, bullied, and teased so badly in school that it left her with zero self-esteem. And I thought, you know, out of respect for this kid, I'm going to photograph her like I would any supermodel. So like the fan, the music, and I literally just held up a mirror and said, Christine, Look at yourself, you're magnificent. And this kid looked in the mirror and she saw what I saw. And she went from this to that. And she exploded with this smile that literally lit up New York City. She created the philosophy of positive exposure at that moment. She, I knew she needed to change the way she saw herself. Her community desperately needed to change the way that they saw her difference. Rick's work is now part of a documentary called On Beauty. I mean, every time he sees her, I need to take a picture of this gorgeous baby. And you can just see he, he knows that she's beautiful. People, they stare. Am I really that different that you have to stare? Though photographs are core to what Rick does, over the years, his work has also moved beyond the camera to full-on passionate advocacy. It's really about creating opportunities to really start the dialogue, to start the dialogue in communities everywhere we can, to get opportunities for the public to understand that, you know, when you're walking down the street and you see someone that's different, you either stare or you look away. Well, over the last 20 years of working with positive exposure, my friends have taught me that that looking away sometimes is more painful than the staring. Positive Exposure exhibits across the world, and Rick is hoping to build a permanent global diversity center. His photographs are now collected in a book aptly titled, Change How You See, See How You Change. He also works with medical students and healthcare professionals, sharing educational photos and videos, a passion born out of his desire to do better than the standard medical pictures documenting many conditions. Take, for example, Marfan syndrome, which affects the body's connective tissue. Cassie was born with a genetic syndrome called Marfan syndrome. We wanted to show you a feature Cassie was born with. As you can see, Cassie's chest sinks inward toward the middle. This is called pectus excavatum. Nobody ever walks into a doctor's office carrying that portable black bar, you know, like they're standing like that. They, this, they're, they're people, there's humanity. You've got to have humanity front row and center. And it's never what you're treating. It's always who you're treating. Despite all the achievements and accolades, when you spend time with Rick, and inevitably with his adorable rescue dog Buster, one thing is clear. It is the stories of change, time and again, that propel him forward. At the end of the shoot, this 14-year-old kid said to me, I realized that finally I could be proud of my albinism. But she said, 14, I realized though that the hatred and the abuse that I have experienced in my life will never disappear but what has disappeared is the hatred that I felt for myself. I never look back. And this is one of billions of stories. It's perseverance, it's survival, it's, it's, it's resilience. Carol Ann Riddell for Arts in the City.